chilling tales for dark nights. Daily Poe by Eric Selsmeyer, narrated by Otis Gyrie. As a kid, I used to spend a good part of my summers with my grandpa at his little second home, his uh, cabin out in the woods. It was a nice, cozy little place. It had indoor plumbing and electricity and all that, but no television. Wasn't too upset about that, though, because we did a whole bunch of stuff together while we were up there. We camped, we fished, hunted, and all that good manly stuff. My granddad had grown up in the Appalachians, you see, kind of a mountain man. He had so many stories, and he loved to tell them, too. Some were serious, some were funny, but his favorite, his favorite kinds of stories, to tell were scary stories. He knew I hated scary stories, which I know is the reason why he loved to tell them so much. His favorite scary story was a story which was known amongst the mountain folk as Taily Poe. And the story went mm, something like this. There was once an old man living in a cabin out in the woods. He didn't have any real neighbors to speak of, he just lived out in the woods with his three hunting dogs in his lonesome little cabin. He wore plain old clothes and was bald on top. He had a big, bushy gray beard that hung down to his chest. All the grease from the day's work and the day's meals seemed to gather in that beard. The old man rarely washed, and when he did, he only did enough so all the grease would drip to the bottom of his beard. Weigh it down, keep it from blowing in the wind. The old man was kind of a mean-spirited fella, and he didn't like people all too well, so he tried to stay away from them as much as possible. Everything he needed, he usually got from the woods. He got his water for drinking and washing from a nearby river, and he'd get his meals with his rifle and three dogs. Besides disliking people, there wasn't much else to the old git aside from his big appetite. He loved to eat, and since hunting was how he ate, he loved to hunt. He loved venison and rabbit. A wild bird was okay now and then, but you know those little chicken nuggets like you get at McDonald's? Yeah, this old man loved something called skunk nuggets. I know what you're thinking, but they're actually pretty good even though you have to cook them outside. But on one cold, dark night, the old man came back home with his dogs empty-handed. It had been chilly that day, and game had been all but completely absent. The old man grumbled and cursed quietly under his breath since he knew he was going to have to go to bed hungry that night, and he didn't like going to bed hungry. But he couldn't really do anything else, so he started to get ready for bed. As he started to do that, though, the old man started to hear a queer scratching noise. The old man looked around, trying to find the source of it. A strange kind of scraping sound, like claws on wood. The old man looked around until he bumped into something, something thick, something hairy. But the old man looked up to see the queerest sight. Hanging down from the ceiling was a long, thick, hairy something, dangling from a hole in the ceiling of the cabin. It wasn't long before the old man figured out that the hole was the source of the scratching and that he was looking at a tail. The thing hanging in the middle of the room was a long, hairy tail dangling from a creature that was trying to force its way in through the roof. The old man didn't think twice. He grabbed his hunting knife and in one movement severed the tail from the creature on the cabin's roof. The old man heard a screech come out of the creature. Such a god-awful screech that it shook the whole cabin. The old man watched as the thing pulled its bleeding stump through the hole in the roof, 
and heard the thing bound from the roof to the ground outside and scurry off into the distance. The dogs started barking, but the old man paid them no heed. He bent over and picked up the severed tail. The blood was already rising to the top of it. The old man pondered over the size of the thing, how thick and long it was. He pondered over what kind of animal would have such a tail, and he pondered over his empty stomach. The old man laid out the tail on the table, and using a chair as a stand, quickly nailed a board over the hole in the roof. After that was done, he set about building a large fire in the fireplace. He shoved an iron spit through the bloodied end of the tail to the tip, and set it over iron handles which would hold it over the fireplace. The old man's mouth watered as he turned the spit over the fire. The hair singed and flew up off the tail, leaving behind the sweet, succulent meat. The old man could smell it now as the fat started to sizzle in the heat and its aroma wafted to his nostrils. Piece by piece, the old man picked off chunks of the thing from the spit and ate it. Slowly, he devoured the thing chunk by chunk, spitting bits and grease out to his dogs to lap up. Oh, it was delicious. The old man, his belly full and with a smile on his face, put his dogs outside for the night. He put to his nightgown and went to bed, pulled up the covers to his chest and pushed his beard out over him. He laid back and was about to drift off to sleep. But there was a tap and all of a sudden, a quiet but distinct rap tap tap tapping. The old man opened his eyes and looked about. Rap tap 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 and went on the side of the cabin. It didn't stop either. It just went ahead and kept on rap tap tap tapping. Then the old man heard something, almost a whisper, yet clear as day. Give me back my tail. Give me my tail back. And the old man felt a cold chill shoot down his spine. He stopped breathing for a bit while he listened to the rap tap tap on the side of the cabin. Again he heard, Give me my tail back. Give me my tail back. The old man leapt from his bed and sprinted to the cabin door. He removed the latch and threw open the door. He shouted out to his dogs, Dogs! Get them, ugly weasel! The dogs came a-barking and a-scratching. They chased the thing from the side of the house and out into the woods. And when the old man saw the dogs come back, he closed the door again. Crawled back into bed and put his beard back over the covers and slowly drifted off to sleep. Rap, tap, tap went the noise again. The old man opened his eyes and looked to the window where the sound was coming from. Rap, tap, tap. Give me my tail back. Give me my tail back. The old man bolted up and ran to the front door again. He unlatched the door and called out once again. Dogs, get that ugly weasel. The dogs came about bounding and barking again. They ran to the window and chased the thing back into the woods. When they finally came back, the old man closed the door again, got back into bed, and put his beard up over the covers. Slowly, slowly he eased down and started to drift back off to sleep. Rap, tap, tap. The old man's eyes bolted open and he listened closely, for now the sound emanated from the front door. Rap, tap, tap. Give me my tail back. Give me my tail back. The old man jumped up out of bed and ran to the window this time. He threw open the latch and opened the window, and he called to his dogs once more. Dogs, get them, ugly weasel. It remained all quiet. His dogs never came. The thing had eaten them all up. The old man slammed shut the window and ran back to his bed, pulling the covers up to his eyes. Rap, tap, tap. Give me my tail back. The old man heard a crack and a horrible splintering as the latch of the door broke open and the door swung open. The old man heard something dragging across the floorboards as the thing crept closer, the stump of its tail dragging behind it. Give me my tail back! 
Go away, the old man whimpered. Give me my tail back. Give me my tail back. The thing was at the foot of his bed now, creeping closer, 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 until... 